So we are here with Jay of WizKids, and WizKids has arguably one of the most popular booths at the con, and that's due to two or three games that have been super popular. Now we had a game that came out, Star Trek Expeditions, a little while ago, so everybody's pretty familiar with that. But we have a couple new games that have just popped onto the scene a few weeks ago, Coyers and Fleet Captains. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those games because everybody's pretty excited about both those guys. Absolutely. Well, uh, Star Trek Fleet Captains is a uh, board game for up to two to four players in which you assume the role of a fleet commander for either the Klingon or the Federation uh, affiliations. And uh, it's a build-your-own-board sort of board game cool. where you literally uh, have a deck of hexagonal tiles and you lay them out in a standard configuration and you build a new board every time you play the game. Excellent. And the premise of the game is you actually are coming across this unexplored sector of space and you want to explore, hopefully gaining resources for your affiliation while simultaneously denying them to your <laughs> opponent. And inevitably, as you explore strange new worlds and meet strange new civilizations, uh, it'll come down to a conflict for sector supremacy between you and your opponent or opponents. Cool. So. And I've seen the bits. They are amazing for this. The, yes. uh, the starships are wonderful. You guys have to be happy with those. Absolutely. Uh, the game itself comes with 24 detailed models, 12 Federation starships, uh, which are very recognizable to Star Trek fans Absolutely. everywhere, and uh, 12 Klingon ships, which are also as recognizable and iconic. And uh, the plan is, while the game itself is a one-and-done, non-collectible uh -huh. product, right. We are building for expansions, Excellent. which will include new affiliations like the Romulans, the Cardassians, and all your other fan favorites, and new Klingon and Federation starships as well. Excellent. So everybody's constantly non-stop demos over there. Everybody's eating it up. You've got a great price. What's the price here at the show for that guy? Uh, the price for Star Trek Fleet Captains is $100. Perfect. It falls into the premium board game range. Gotcha. So. And actually, we're doing a show special where folk purchasing Fleet Captains can uh, leave us their address, and we'll send them a whole new set of cards as well, wow. and including two new outposts so that they can easily expand the game to four players. Excellent. That sounds awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Cool. Now, the next game that we have to talk about now, you don't know this, but I am addicted to dice like crazy. So when Coyers was announced, this was my number one. I have to see this game. Came over, bought it right away, have had a chance to play it. I love it. Uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about Coyers because it's awesome. Coyers is a game that, uh, that builds upon the deck building uh, philosophy where you are literally uh, purchasing new items to include in your pool of resources. And uh, at, during the course of the game, uh, getting rid of less desirable elements within your re pool of resources right. so you can kind of concentrate and build a deck or a dice pool as we like to say of uh, very powerful spells and creatures with which to attack your opponent's uh, creatures denying them the opportunity to score glory which is the goal of the game cool. um, and then uh, as you go through the game you get to roll all sorts of great custom cut dice that we've designed just for this game Sweet. so there's no ones twos three <laughs> four fives or sixes on these guys uh, each each die represents either a monster in the game or a spell that you can cast um, the dice themselves are beautiful and honestly we couldn't be more happy with how they turned out um, it really has been the buzz of the show we premiered the game originally uh, demonstrating it for the public at origins uh -huh and uh, Board Game Geek has been really on fire about it. So as soon as we open the doors Thursday morning, people have just been swarming our booths to get a look at this game. And you actually still have some left? We, uh, <laughs> I actually believe uh, that we're not going home with any wow. after this weekend. Nice and problem. we brought a considerable amount. So it's been a really, really nice uh, show item to offer this year. Excellent. Now, as a fan of the game already, even though I just tried it last night, <laughs> please tell me there's some ideas for expansions on the horizon for this guy. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we're planning our first expansion to come out in November of this year. Sweet. And we're going to include, uh, the current plan is new cards to mm -hmm. uh, utilize some of the existing dice that already come with the game. New dice to represent new monsters and spells. Excellent. And uh, we're actually going to introduce a new mechanic where you can actually put dice in your opponent's dice pools uh -huh. to uh, mess with their resources. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it a great deal. Excellent. Well, with these three new games out for WizKids, um, certainly they're a different turn from what you guys have done in the past. Are you going to kind of lean towards this type of thing in the future to have some things on the shelf that are getting ready to surprise us here in the next year or so? We absolutely have some great games coming up. I don't want anyone by any means to think that we're abandoning Heroclix. Okay. It's a widely recognized brand. Absolutely. We love it. The fans love it. We're going to continue on doing that. But we're also, you know, exploring this new territory of board games. And with the next couple of releases, we're actually going to be combining 
with uh -huh. two different uh, concepts. We have a uh, Lord of the Rings Heroclix coming out soon. Awesome. And that's going to be available in two different formats, a standard Heroclix booster release, uh -huh. as well as a semi-cooperative Nazgul board game where nice. you actually assume the role of one of the ring rates and <laughs> work with awesome. other players as ring rates to stymie the fellowship. Oh, that's awesome. It, absolutely. <laughs> and it's semi-cooperative in the sense that while you're working against the fellowship, only one of you can curry Sauron's favor. Nice. And you will inevitably begin backstabbing each other. Excellent. Now, what kind of a timeline does that guy have for... We're looking uh, fourth quarter this year or okay. very early first quarter next year. Okay. Excellent. Um, we're also bringing back a very popular IP that we used to use, uh, Mage Knight. Cool. And that's coming back as a fully uh, uh, board game. Okay, nice. Um, that draws on that intellectual property, you know, the, the mythos of that universe. It won't be uh, Hero Clicks compatible, but it will be utilizing that that whole like myth and fantasy that we built up over the years in Mage Knight. So it'll be a lot, very familiar with, to a lot of our fans. Awesome. That sounds great. Well, Jay, I certainly appreciate you taking out time. I know what's a busy schedule because I'm looking over my shoulder <laughs> and your booth is cram packed still. Absolutely. So. It's always it's always great to be the popular guy at the prom. So. Absolutely. So thank you very much for your thank time. You. Enjoy thank the you rest of the con. Absolutely. You too.